After considering the value of wisdom, the rewards of wisdom, and the deliverance from evil that wisdom provides, we're now going to consider some of the perils of wickedness to further reinforce what we've already learned. That of embracing and following the wisdom that comes from God is for our good. The perils of wickedness can be divided into three categories, the hardship of life, lack of hope for the future, and the inevitability of judgment. We read in Proverbs 13 and verse 15 that good understanding produces favor, but the way of the treacherous is hard. The first peril of wickedness is hardship in life. People often complain about the way of God being difficult to follow, and in one sense it is, but the path of wickedness contains hardships that would be avoided if one would simply follow what was right. The hardships that come as a result of one rejecting God's wisdom are unnecessary and unavoidable. We read in Proverbs 5 verses 22 and 23, His own iniquities will capture the wicked, and he will be held with the cord of his sins. He will die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he will go astray. One of the lies of sin is to convince us that we are still in control rather than sin becoming the master over us. But sin captures, binds us. Paul later wrote, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? Romans 6 and verse 16. When we pursue sin rather than righteousness or divine wisdom, we become slaves to sin, and the end result is that we die for lack of instruction. This shows us that God's instruction teaches us to repudiate sin, and many believe that sin is tolerable because it cannot cause a child of God to be lost. Well, friends, this idea is false. The Word of God plainly teaches us to avoid sin. Therefore, if one ignores this instruction and chooses to live without it, he will be captured by his iniquities, which will ultimately result in death. We then read in Proverbs 6, verses 12 through 15, that a worthless person, a wicked man, is one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually spreads strife. Therefore his calamity will be suddenly and instant. He will be broken, and there will be no healing. The actions described here refers to one who is a troublemaker and is intent upon spreading strife among people. Well, when one acts in a corrupt fashion like this, Solomon says that his calamity that will result from his wickedness will be that which is unexpected, meaning it will come suddenly and instantly upon him. Now he may be able to deceive himself into thinking that there is no cause for concern, and many who follow after wickedness will do this, causing their own consciences to become seared, as Paul addressed in 1 Timothy 4 and in verse 2. But trouble is always inevitable for people like this. Solomon goes on to say in chapter 9 and verse 12 that if you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you alone will bear it. This reminds us of the principle of personal responsibility. When one does not take responsibility for themselves, then they are not following after divine wisdom. They are acting wickedly and they will place the blame on anyone else for their actions or for the consequences of those actions. But when a wicked man comes, Contempt also comes, and with dishonor comes scorn. As one rejects God's wisdom and follows after sin, he becomes known by others for his character and his actions. And though one may believe that he will help himself by engaging in sin, and all sin is fundamentally rooted in selfishness, his actions will produce a reputation about him, and that reputation will result in dishonor and contempt and as such he will be seen as an abomination to men. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. Please consider these things and have a blessed day.